An oil tanker, also known as a petroleum tanker, is a ship designed for the bulk transport of oil or its products. There are two basic types of oil tankers, crude tankers and product tankers. Crude tankers move large quantities of unrefined crude oil from its point of extraction to refineries. Product tankers, generally much smaller, are designed to move refined products from refineries to points near consuming markets. Oil tankers are often classified by their size as well as their occupation. The size classes range from inland or coastal tankers of a few thousand metric tons of dead weight of oil every year, second only to pipelines in terms of efficiency. The average cost of transport of crude oil by tanker amounts to only five United States dollars to eight dollars per cubic meter. Some specialized types of oil tankers have evolved. One of these is the naval replenishment oiler, a tanker which can fuel a moving vessel. Combination or bulk oil carriers and permanently moored floating storage units are two other variations on the standard oil tanker design. Oil tankers have been involved in a number of damaging and high-profile oil spills. As a result, they are subject to stringent design and operational regulations. The technology of oil transportation has evolved alongside the oil industry. Although human use of oil reaches to prehistory, the first modern commercial exploitation dates back to James Young's manufacture of paraffin in 1850. In the early 1850s, oil began to be exported from Upper Burma, then a British colony. The oil was moved in earthenware vessels to the river bank where it was then poured into boat holds for transportation to Britain. In the 1860s, Pennsylvania oil fields became a major supplier of oil and a center of innovation after Edwin Drake had struck oil near Titusville, Pennsylvania. Brake bulk boats and barges were originally used to transport Pennsylvania oil in 4.0 US gallon wooden barrels, but transport by barrel had several problems. The first problem was weight. They weighed 29 kilograms, representing 20% of the total weight of a full barrel. Other problems with barrels were their expense, their tendency to leak, and the fact that they were generally used only once. The expense was significant. For example, in the early years of the Russian oil industry, barrels accounted for half the cost of petroleum production. In 1863, two sail-driven tankers were built on England's River Tyne. These were followed in 1873 by the first oil tank steamer, Vardaland, which was built by Palmer's Shipbuilding and Iron Company for Belgian owners. The vessel's use was curtailed by US and Belgian authorities citing safety concerns. By 1871, the Pennsylvania oil fields were making limited use of oil tank barges and cylindrical railroad tank cars similar to those in use today. The modern oil tanker was developed in the period from 1877 to 1885. In 1876, Ludwig and Robert Noble, brothers of Alfred Noble, founded Branobel in Baku, Azerbaijan. It was, during the late 19th century, one of the largest oil companies in the world. Ludwig was a pioneer in the development of early oil tankers. He first experimented with carrying oil in bulk on single-hulled barges, turning his attention to self-propelled tank ships. He faced a number of challenges. A primary concern was to keep the cargo and fumes well away from the engine room to avoid fires. Other challenges included allowing for the cargo to expand and contract due to temperature changes and providing a method to ventilate the tanks. The first successful oil tanker was Zoroaster, which carried its 246 metric tons, and a draft of 2.7 meters. Unlike later noble tankers, the Zoroaster design was built small enough to sail from Sweden to the Caspian by way of the Baltic. C. Lake Ladoga, Lake Onega, the Ribbonsk and Marinsk canals and the Volga River. In 1883, Oil tanker design took a large step forward. Working for the Noble Company, British engineer Colonel Henry F. Swan designed a set of three Noble tankers. Instead of one or two large holes, Swan's design used several holes which spanned the width or beam of the ship. These holes were further subdivided into port and starboard sections by a longitudinal bulkhead. Earlier designs suffered from stability problems caused by the free surface effect. 
where oil sloshing from side to side could cause a ship to capsize. But this approach of dividing the ship's storage space into smaller tanks virtually eliminated free surface problems this approach, almost universal today, was first used by Swan in the noble tankers Blesk, Lumen, and Lux. Others point to Glukov, another design of Colonel Swan, as being the first modern oil tanker. It adopted the best practices from previous oil tanker designs to create the prototype for all subsequent vessels of the type. It was the first dedicated steam-driven ocean-going tanker in the world and was the first ship in which oil could be pumped directly into the vessel hull instead of being loaded in.